Hi guys, welcome back to another World Painter tutorial. This time I want to focus on something which is to me uh, very common and very normal information, but I think a lot of people could use a bit more information on it, uh, and that's texturing within World Painter. Um, one of the most useful techniques I tend to use is using the uh, above and below or the degree setting. So what you could do when texturing, I, I just got a basic map over here, just something I threw together a little while ago. This is like imported from World Machine, doesn't really matter for the, the this tutorial. Um, anyhow, if you want to texture something, first of all, you of course want to know what kind of texture you want. So often I uh, in-game decide, all right, I want this color palette, right? So once you figure that out, uh, you basically take, uh, like it's all grass right now, you take something like stone, you, you select above 45 degrees, and what it does is everything above 45 degrees gets painted in, right? So everything that's 40 uh, at an angle of 45 degrees or around 45 degrees, right, gets turned into stone. Um, now, this is relatively plain still, right? If you look at this, it, it's not gonna be that interesting. Um, so what you want to do next then is, all right, you take something either a lighter or a darker color. Per personally, I would, uh, what I tend to do is uh, I use the lighter, lighter colors for the lowest amount of degrees. And then uh, whenever I go up a few degrees or a certain amount of degrees, I, I try to get a darker texture in there. For instance, the darker texture than the stone texture is the cyan uh, terracotta, which is over here. Should be here. Let's see, where is it? Uh, cyan stained clay, I mean, my bad. Uh, use that and for instance turn this to 55 degrees. And now, as you can see, we actually got some more interesting looking texture in here. Now, one thing you want to do, or want to be able to do, of course, this is just a simple list. So one important thing, uh, thing you need to know how to do and what you could use is uh, adding custom material. Right, so over in the terrain tab, you can press this plus create custom material and over here you can basically select whatever you want right so i personally tend to use this nowadays uh, these are the old id numbers which are used in the older versions of minecraft uh, so i'm making this tutorial when 1.16 is around right so it doesn't really matter um, anyhow if you look in here you can for instance uh, some color that could be an in between of this is a uh, gray concrete concrete powder for instance so I could select gray concrete powder, get that. It already says the name here. The color should out pick automatically, basically based around this. Uh, and then just press OK, and it will add it to the custom menu. I already had some in here, so let's remove those for a second. That's my bad. Yeah, I'll remove that one. Right. Now, if this is technically lighter than cyan, which I believe it is, uh, you actually kind of want this to be on the 55 degrees, right? It looks darker in this case, though. It, th that's why I said you gotta check this out in-game, decide your color palette in-game. I think if I turn this in, I, I could actually do this, turn this into light gray. So let's get light gray concrete powder. There we go. That's light blue. My bad. Light gray concrete powder. And this is definitely... Uh, it might actually be lighter than stone, but maybe it's not. The, the textures within World uh, Painter aren't actually perfect, so ignore that. Um, but yeah, you, you can just go on top of this again and then replace everything based around above 45 degrees angle. Now something you can do to make this a lot easier, when you mainly when you have a bigger world, is use the Global Operations tool. Right? So this tool, basically what it does, it allows you to uh, run something, for instance like texturing, across the entirety of the map. So what you can do is, for instance, before you go in here, you go and like paint your biomes in. Right now this is all... Uh, I believe it's like spruce forest or whatever. Um, when you do this on a smaller scale, for instance, I can like select this area and say this is going to be planes. If it wants to work. And for some, yeah, I, I turn that off. There you go. So I could turn this into planes, for instance. I believe this is actually river biome, but that doesn't matter for now. So if I turn this into planes, I go back to my global operations. What I can do now is, for instance, I select fill with terrain type, which is what we're doing right now. Stone above 45 degrees. And to make it so I can actually texture this in a different manner. For instance, if I want this to be a more white, a white stone, I could use diorite instead of normal stone. So to filter those out, what I tend to do is use the biomes. And then you just go fill with, uh, not, not fill with biome type, uh, fill with terrain type, and then you can go and use only on or accept on. In this case, uh, you would most likely use only on terrain, no biome, there we go. 
and then you want to use it on I believe like I said it should be it's not tiger is it tiger maybe it's just tiger there we go I believe that did it for some reason this isn't off texture right I, I used this map before so some stuff is a bit off my bad so if I turn these off now no, it didn't hit it, so whatever. The biome should actually be shown bottom left. Yeah, it's a uh, tiger biome. So I don't know why it didn't texture it. That's a bit odd. This above 45 degrees, put this on stone. Maybe I put it back to dirt by accident. Uh, only on biome tiger. And it does not work. Wait, let me figure out why this is broken. Give me a second. All right, so apparently I uh, actually painted some into Taiga Hills, uh, which is why it didn't work. Uh, so now it should actually be all Taigas. Uh, like I said, I used this map before, I just grabbed it. Um, so now it actually should work. My bad for that. Uh, sorry. Only on Bio Taiga. Above 45 degrees. And that should do it. There we go. Now that's all stone. All right. So whenever you add a new uh, new terrain or layer, it, it gets added to the custom terrain. And you can actually use that in here as well. If you use fill with terrain type, it should be somewhere around the bottom. It always It's always on the resources, I don't know why, it's always on the bottom. Doesn't matter, I think, what you name it, it's always gonna be here. Uh, so you can then use that, use above 40, uh, 55. And if I don't, for instance, now use the only on uh, selection and just go and do this all you see this area is now also affected by this so that's a way to sort of dual texture things in your world in a somewhat easy manner when you have a bigger map for me it's, right now on this map it's not very interesting to do that uh, but when you have a bigger map it does definitely help to do it that way um, but to kind of make things clean again we'll just go and do 45 and just fill everything in for now now the other thing I want to talk about, this is basically the basics when it comes to degrees. You can use the below of course, if you want to use uh, below 25. Uh, this can also be used for instance when you paint in trees and stuff like that so they don't like, be, so they aren't placed on too high of an angle. Uh, but you can do for instance below 45 and then texture that in. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, options with that. Uh, same goes with like the adder above or adder below. These are for the actual heights, uh, they are very useful as well. Um, I, I never really use the inside or outside selection, uh, it's honestly not that useful, uh, so just ignore that I'd say. And there might be some uses for that, but if you use it, it's most likely because you're already very good with all this stuff. Uh, when you're a beginner and you don't know how all this stuff works, just ignore all that. Alright, anyhow, when it comes to adding custom terrain, there's something more you can do. You can go back to creating a custom material and you can actually go to complex. And what this allows you to do is a few things. Uh, for instance, you can add multiple materials in one layer. So this can be both dirt and, for instance, uh, coarse dirt. I'm not sure if you're gonna see that in here. No, you're not. So let's actually do something you're gonna see, like grass. All right. So in here you see coarse dirt and grass as a combination, right? And this is basically set to noise. So what noise is, is basically it just selects, in this case, a 50-50 whether it's gonna be grass or dirt. If I up this count, for instance, and turn this dirt into 26, what it should do is now, uh, the dirt occurs uh, basically, uh, what it does, it takes a number right uh, from one to 29 right now, and whenever it's uh, one to three, basically, it's, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be grass, and when it's like 26, uh, anywhere between one to 26, it's gonna take dirt, right? It's a bit hard to explain how this works, but basically the higher this number is, the more often this is gonna occur. And the lower it is, the more often the other thing is gonna occur, right? So if I move this one down, that also means the dirt is gonna occur more often, like you can see here. So the other thing you can do is blobs, all right? So I tend to, um, no noise is often very useful, uh, but it's also very messy, because uh, it's like really texturing. It's uh, basically very noisy. It's hard to explain why, but you'll notice when you try. Just test these things out for yourself and you'll figure out why. Uh, I personally don't really tend to use this at all. Uh, at blobs, I tend to use a little bit more because I find it a little bit better to use. And these have uh, this one has a bit better options when you use them. 
So not only can you change the amount of occurrences basically for either one, you can also for instance say, all right, so the grass doesn't occur that often, but when it occurs, it's gonna be a lot bigger than the dirt or the, the dirt is gonna be, right? Uh, so you're definitely gonna notice this when I add like another material, for instance, if I throw a stone in here and put this to one as well. You're gonna notice, all right, so the stone is gonna be very relatively small scale. And whenever grass occurs, it's gonna be way bigger compared to the stone areas, right? Uh, so mixing and matching that allows you to sort of create more uh, shapes within your terrain. And this could be useful, for instance, as well, if you wanna do something else than like actual texturing. Um, this could be useful for creating things, something like flower patches or some, anything along those lines. Uh, you can actually even use this maybe to sort of select uh, dead and live areas. For instance, if you make some sort of forest where a lot of the area is dead and you want some grassy bits to poke out, this could be a very great option to do that. Alright, so when it comes down to using this custom material, right, uh, when you use the layered option, you have basically two kind of things you can do. Uh, whenever you don't touch this, uh, what you'll get is the sort of mesa look and feel, right? So what you get is basically layer up and layer up and layer from 0 to 255. Um, you can actually turn repeat off and then it basically starts from the bottom, works its way to the top. So if I up this to 50, uh, what will happen is like the first layer is stone, then up to 50, every layer will be dirt where I paint is, and then, uh, or cross blocks where I paint is, and then every layer above that will be turned into dirt. Um, but uh, the other thing you can actually do with this is, for instance, turn repeat off, and then you actually get like thick layers of grass, and every so often you have this break line with like the dirt and the stone, um, and you can use that for any combination, whatever you like, which is kind of what the Mesa does, right? Uh, but one last thing you can actually do with this is uh, you can change the variation range, which gives this kind of effect, which looks really weird top down. Um, what this will do when you have like a flat, uh, side uh, face right uh, a wall face you get these wobbles on uh, on that wall which would be very odd and I would never really use this I think maybe on a very low angle it might be cool right that like one or two noise or variation range a bit of roughness in there you could actually use it in your Mesa um, but something else which is really cool you can actually do whenever you up basically this Instead of this being a straight face, this is actually gonna be a flat face, like anything you can see here, uh, which is what I used in my uh, farm tutorial video, basically. Uh, so it's kind of weird how this works, but whenever you start using these two, you basically uh, remove it from being uh, top to bottom and make it left to right, or uh, yeah, basically make it left to right, right? Uh, and in there, you can actually also play around again with like the variation range. So you get these wobbles in there, uh, which could be pretty interesting uh, you, you can use these patterns for somewhat more realistic land areas and stuff like that or uh, when I mean realistic I mean more like modern so something that's edited by people uh, you could actually very well use this on which could save you a lot of time in game uh, when done right basically um, now that's kind of all the, the standardized ways to texture your map right um, something you can try and do is transitions between biomes which uh, one way you can do those or transitions at least between textures is you can use this spray can. Uh, I personally used this in the beginning but after a while personally stopped liking this. I, I just don't really like the look. Uh, but what you could do now, so right here you you'd see basically the textures swapping right and you have this little bit of noise in there which kind of makes it makes the blend look uh, all right -ish. Uh, personally I, I don't prefer this texture style anymore i try to just find areas where like grass flows into grass and there i just change the, the the biome basically and then whenever there's a mountain what i'll do is just uh, make sure the mountain continues its texture until it's basically it's gonna hit nothing right for instance uh, over here when I paint biomes, right, what I do is, right, so this is still, all right, let's turn that off. This is still part of this mountain, right? This is part of this mountain. And then this mountainous area, this stone texture can be different kind of stone, right? Whilst this is gonna be a different kind of stone as well. And that way you sort of segment uh, your lands or your pieces of land without going too far over, right? Without like having to do the noisy blending. Uh, which I personally don't like and you can actually do that noisy blending with like your biome stuff 
but as long as you don't like touch the stone texture it, uh, it looks pretty well mainly with like the biome blending turned on very high within minecraft itself um, now the other thing you can actually use to texture your terrain is uh, a custom ground cover layer um, i wouldn't normally recommend this for texturing uh, but it can definitely be used as texturing so if we for instance select the light gray concrete powder uh, what this can do is uh, be placed basically, this one doesn't have a texture of course, which is very stupid. Let's just use water for this example. Right, right now this water is basically placed upon each block, you can actually make it go minus, and then it basically pulls down from the block it originates from. Um, so this can actually be used in certain areas, because you can sort of create a rounded shape or something like that. Uh, one use of this could actually be if you turn this to air, you can sort of create smaller pockets or different areas, uh, which could be interesting. I use this to actually make my rivers within the game. I have a tutorial on that as well. Uh, other than that, I would never really use this for actual terrain texturing when it comes down to using uh, blocks, right? Uh, but when it comes down to actually using, uh, for instance, flowers and stuff, you can actually use this. Uh, it's not the best, but it's very... It can be useful when it comes down to a certain level of control, which you, which you might want. Um, other than that, that's basically all the features you use, so it's most often this menu, a lot of uh, global operations, mainly with certain maps, they can be very useful. When you have a big blunt map, this, this global operation tool is just like the best thing ever. Uh, so keep that in mind, use that as much as you possibly can, because it's a massive time saver. Same goes with adder above and adder below, using those can be very useful when it comes to creating, for instance, beaches, stuff like that. Because you don't want your beaches to go too much above the water level, right? So using those you have a little bit more control without like being able to sort of mess up and hit areas you don't want to hit uh, with your painting. Um, yeah, that's basically all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, I hope this is uh, good enough. Uh, if I miss something or if there's something you tend to do when it comes to texturing, please let me know. Uh, other than that, uh, when it comes down to custom brushes and stuff, I personally don't use brushes for texturing uh, at all. Uh, like I said, I just try... Uh, basically, most of my texturing is just using the above or below tools. Uh, they do the job very well, I'd say. And when you use a bit of noise in there or blobs in there, you can actually create some really interesting looking terrain when you do it right, basically. Um, anyhow, like I said, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time.